Hey everyone, so today we are talking about ophthalmic drugs. How do you remember that ophthalmic has to do with the eye? Optical, OP, ophthalmic drugs have to do with the eye. So these are drugs that go in your eye. Let's get started. So firstly, we're gonna talk about two conditions. We're gonna talk about glaucoma and dry eye and what to do to treat them. So let's start with glaucoma. Now you may have heard of glaucoma, but what actually is it? Well, it's actually a group of eye diseases. It's, it's not just one disease because it can be caused by multiple factors, but all of the diseases that encompass glaucoma cause vision loss and eventually blindness if, blindness if they are not treated. And that is through damage to the optic nerve in the back of the eye. So as you can see, this is the normal retina. So this is what the eye doctor is. When the eye doctor, your uh, ophthalmologist is looking into your eye, this is what they see through that little uh, lens that they're looking through right there. So they're looking onto the back of your eye and looking at all the blood vessels. And you can see that's where the optic nerve normally is on that left picture, that picture on the left. So you can see the up, the nerve is innervated, it has all the connections and it's looking healthy. Now that glaucomatous optic nerve, look at that, it's kind of dislodged. It's dislodged, the vessels aren't as defined, they're not giving it as much blood flow, and it comes through the, the damage from that increased ocular pressure or high eye pressure is usually associated with glaucoma, and that might be one of the causes. However, most types of glaucoma actually have no cause. There are what's known as idiopathic. Idiopathic diseases have no known cause. So they just kind of happen for a reason that we don't quite understand, that we can't diagnose the exact reason. And most glaucoma, unfortunately, is idiopathic. However, there are a few signs and symptoms, but most people, over 50% of people with glaucoma, don't know they have it. So that's why eye exams are essential. The first symptom that people with glaucoma may have, though, is vi vision loss. And that begins with peripheral vision. So that's the side of your head and then slowly progresses to greater vision loss. There are also risk factors with glaucoma. Most, it's most common in people who are over 60 years old. So that's why it's important if you are a person over 60 to get those either annual or biannual eye exams. It's also more common in African-Americans, unfortunately, who are over the age of 40. So that's why people, it, it, uh, the rate is a bit higher in the African-American community because in many cases, we have a, a cultural uh, disadvantage, uh, socioeconomic disadvantages to these. These are people who might not be able to afford or have access, unfortunately, to a eye doctor that for regular checkups. And that's just sort of how our, how our society has unfortunately pr progressed, but we're working to help those healthcare disparities and try to get that rate in African-Americans down. Also a family history of glaucoma, regardless of your race or ethnicity may also have a factor. Now treating glaucoma, we have sort of a two pronged approach and these can be used together or uh, by themselves. We have beta blockers, which work by lowering the amount of fluid in your eye, and that makes to decrease the ocular pressure. So beta blockers allow for the dilation of your tear ducts. When your tear ducts uh, are not inflamed, therefore you are able to, um, oh, sorry, uh, they, they work by lowering the amount of fluid in the eye. So it decreases the pressure, right? So beta blockers, much like how they decrease blood pressure, they can also decrease ocular pressure or eye pressure. And the example of a beta blocker that is quite common as eye drops is Timolol or Timoptic. Super easy to remember Timoptic, right? Optic, optical has to do with the eye. Timoptic is Timolol. Next, we have our prostaglandin analogs. Prostaglandins are just inflammatory uh, chemicals which go throughout the body when uh, they're triggered essentially when the immune system says, hey, like th this is an inflammation that we have to deal with. Let's, let's cause some inflammation over here. Prostaglandins get to work. Uh, prostaglandins though, they help by helping the fluid drain from the eye to lower the ocular pressure. So the prostaglandin analog, as you can see over here is latanoprost or zolatin. That's how you pronounce it, zolatin or zolatin. And its side effects, they're typical with all eye drops is blurred vision, of course, especially in the short term, right after you put them in. Stinging as well in the short term, itching, burning, or redness in the eye. 
Long term, though, the weird side effect that people have to look out for with latanoprost, and it occurs after months or years of use, is that it may slowly turn eye color more brown. Now, patients with lighter, like blue-green eyes, are more at risk for the side effect, but it can also change eye color or even eyelash color of certain individuals. So that's just something to keep in mind. And lastly, we have dry eyes. Cyclosporin is the generic medication that's used to treat dry eyes. It's a prescription medication, and it works by decreasing immune-related inflammation to the eyes and tear ducts. So what do I mean by that? Well, you can see right here that inflammation uh, leads, this is straight from the Restasis website, by the way, uh, inflammation leads to reduced tear production because if your tear ducts are inflamed, then no water can pass through them right? So it does make sense. So without enough tears, the film protecting your eye can break down and that causes chronic dry eye. So it works by decreasing immune-related inflammation of the eyes and the tear ducts. So cyclo cyclosporin is an immunosuppressant. So that's why oral cyclosporin is commonly used in transplant patients to prevent the body from rejecting a new organ. So you'll see oral cyclosporin for transplant patients, and yet for something as serious as that, or something as common as dry eye. You can also use cyclosporin. It's really kind of a wonder drug. Side effects, of course, include burning, itching, or eye discomfort, especially on installation of the drops. And occasionally there can be redness seen on the inside of eyelids or bloodshot eyes. However, that sort of defeats the purpose of using cyclosporin. If you are getting redness and bloodshot eyes when you already had dry eyes in the first place, I would recommend changing that medication. However, cyclosporin, is in your top 200 drugs used in this case as restasis for dry eye. And that is just about all for eye stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me.